So we closed the beginning of the tractate of Bikurim with this focus on kind of who is, who is rooted where. And we were talking about um, being rooted to the land and plants which were physically rooted to the land. And the Mishnah continues, the fourth Mishnah continues, with the list of those who bring but do not recite. So we began yesterday with those who do not have to bring at all. If your produce is not connected to the land, you don't have to bring it. But there's a group of people who do bring but don't recite. If you like, it's a halfway house. Elu mivin velokorin. These bring that they don't recite. The convert hager. The convert brings and doesn't recite. It's from the, the recitation which you've sworn unto our forefathers to give to us. Let's just go back and look at the Pesukim. We, we looked at the Pesukim a couple of days ago. They're so important, these, these Pesukim. Uvatayel ha-Kohen, you shall go to the Kohen, asher yeh bayamim ha-hem, who will be in those places. Ve'amartayel ha-hem, and you'll say to him, Higadati ha-yom l'adonai lo-hecha, I declare today to the Lord, your God, he's talking to the Kohen, kivati ha-aretz, I've come to the land. I've come to the land which the Lord swore to our forefathers to give to us. And if he can't make that declaration, according to the Mishnah, he cannot recite. He brings, but he does not recite. And we find, let's just carry on in the Mishnah. And we find that shocking because we treat a Ger as a Jew. But let's just carry on reading. Let's carry on on the Mishnah. It gets more shocking. If, he, if his mother was, was a Jew, then he, he, brings and he, re, he brings and recites. And when he prays privately, he's, he's, he's reciting the Shmonis on his own. Omer, Elohe avot Yisrael. He doesn't say Elohe avoteinu, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu. He says Elohe avot Yisrael. So he says, God of the fathers of Israel. And when he's in synagogue, he says, he says, Elohei avotechem, the God of your fathers. Eloheinu velohei avotechem. It's a completely unknown nusach. We don't have this. We don't have this in our shuls today. The imaito imom Israel, and if his mother was Jewish, Omer Elohei avotechem, he says, the God of our fathers. So it's a puzzle. Of, it's a, I mean, it's it's quite it's quite shocking actually when you read this mishnah. We've come across before, by the way, a, a mishnah like this. And I think last time we came across it, I brought you the tshuva of the Rambam to Ra to Ovadia Hager, and the Rambam assures him that he recites um, the Shmonis as everyone else does. Eloheinu v'leehevotenu. And I just wanted to bring you here the Rambam's commentary on this mishnah. It's very interesting, the Rambam's commentary on this Mishnah. And he says, It's all explained very clearly. But the decision of the Halakha is, The convert does bring and does recite. So the Rambam turns over the Mishnah. I think, on, according to the commentators, on the basis of a remark in the Yerushalmi, and, and generally, by the way, the Rambam will not overturn a Mishnah without a source. So on the basis of the Yerushalmi, the, the Rambam is going to turn the Mishnah upside down, and he's going to bring a verse for it. He's going to bring a verse for it. We're going to base this on what uh, God told us. Uh, sorry, Avraham on what God said to Avraham, and it's in Genesis 17:5. Ki av hamon goyim netaticha. When God changes Avram's name from Avram to Avraham, He says it's 
actually it's um, in the part, it's going to be in Lech Lecha. So we're going to read this in 10 days time. He says, Ki Avhamon goyim I'm changing your name to Avraham because you, I have made you the father of many nations. Ki Avhamon goyim And then the Rambam goes on to say, Amru. Um, Amru l'shavar ha'ita av Aram. Before you were a father to Aram. Achshavata av l'chol ha'ulam kulo. Now you are a father to the whole world. And for this reason, every convert may recite, Asher nishvata lavoteinu latzelano. Every convert can recite which you have swore to our fathers to give to us on the basis that Avraham was the father of the whole world, because he taught them about faith. There is a remark in, uh, I think it's in Avot, that your teacher is like your father. And the Rambam seems to be, is, he's hanging his, his remarks on this. He's saying that Avraham taught the whole world about, monith, about well, in his words, about emunah, about faith. I mean, we say that, Avraham taught the whole world about monotheism. And the Rambam is saying, because of that, every inhabitant of the world is in some way a child of Abraham, and of course, therefore, can say, Eloheinu vela So, the, so the, the, the Rambam is going to turn the Mishnah on its head, but of course, the Mishnah carries on. And the, the, in, in, at the end of this Mishnah, we're going to come back to questions of Bikurim, but the Mishnah is now going to go off on a segue on other issues of descent and ancestry. So Rabbi, this is this, this Mishnah is parallel to a Mishnah in Kirushin. Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says, Isha bakerim lo tinasela kuna, a convert, the daughter of a convert can't marry a priest. Ad shetehe imam Yisrael. Again, the Mishnah seems to need to articulate the fact that if the if if this person's mother is Jewish, then they seem to be fully Jewish, almost as if the halakha that we accept today hadn't yet been crystallized in the time of the Mishnah. I, I've had learned from, and I have learned in a different context actually that that learns on that the laws on paternal and maternal descent didn't crystallize really until quite late. And then Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says this applies whether this applies forever. Echad gerim ve'echad avadim mushucharim va'filu ad asaradarot. This applies even to ten generations unless their mother is an Israelite. And of course, we know this is not the halacha we observe today. If you look carefully, the halacha on priests marrying children of converts is different in Yechezkel from the halacha, which is brought in Torah. It's one of the puzzles that Yechezkiel seems to have a different version of the rules for priests from the version that we have in Torah today. Maybe he had a different text. Maybe he had a different tradition. We don't know. But this idea seems to be based on Yechezkiel. It's not halacha. It's not halacha. And the Mishnah in Kirushin actually makes clear, I brought it at the end. We won't have time to learn it inside, but it's on the source sheet. The Mishnah in Kirushin makes it clear it's not halakha. But the Mishnah brings it, even though it's not halakha. And then it goes on to now, and then it goes back to questions of Bikurim and questions of ownership and roots. And goes on to say, Ha'apotropos, Vehashaliya, Veha Eved, a guardian, an agent, a slave, Veha Isha, a woman. The tumtum, a tumtum is someone with no sexual organs or ones which are not evident anyway. The androgynous, an androgynous is a hermaphrodite, someone with two, with kind of both male and female organs. Mavi'in velokorin, they bring, but they don't recite. She'inan yocholim lomar asher natata li Hashem. We're going back to our pasuk. And there's an idea. There's an, the Mishnah is, is based on an idea that when the land was divided, you have to exclude, excuse, if you don't mind, the gendered nature of this remark. And it's not relevant for today, but there's an idea brought down in Halakha that when the land was divided, it was divided among the men. 
And of course, we do have the daughters of Tzlofchad who inherit from their father because they have no brothers. But that seems to be an exception. And of course, they marry other men from their tribe. And at that point, their inheritance, I presume, is then handed on to their sons, if they have any sons. So there's an assumption in the Mishnah that when the land was divided and given out to the tribes, it was given to the men. And if you're not a full man, a complete man, you don't have a stake in the land. And this, this Mishnah, you know, it feels very, very strange to us today. But, um, gosh, well, that's one reason why. And, 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 and you know, the, for halachic purposes, it's not relevant today because we don't base our ownership of the land now on, on the, um, I mean, the, the carve out that was made when Moshe went into the land disappeared when the land was overrun by the Babylonians in 587. So we don't learn halacha from this, of any practical import from this Mishnah. But it's a really fascinating, um, it's a really a fascinating time capsule and we're going to stop here i'm going to stop recording and then next week we're going to go more into the mainstream of um people who who bring or don't bring for for different reasons ready for questions